Make them suffer. Alien fiends! Stand back, I'll show you how it's done. If I needed help regarding this, why, for the love of all gold-plated plant life on Terra, would I ask you? It would be like looking for advice about depression medication from a precarious obscure addict. If you're as omniscient as you think you are, then you should know how right I am. My experience in the matter does give me a level of expertise. After all, I'm a daemon prince for crying out loud. I'm literally made of warp stuff. One would think that after all the stunts you pulled, you would have some kind of discretion over the atrocious amount of shittery you have been spewing everywhere. If anyone has the right to say I told you so, then I should have set up a parade with banners and streamers and clowns and whatever else just for you. I'm not saying I told you so, I'm just saying that you and I both know damn well that you're ridiculously narrow-minded on the matter. It's just the way things are, and you know it. Son, I'm the motherfucking emperor. I can alter whatever I desire. I am like a glorious golden god. Except I am not, of course. And look where your meddling has gotten you. Oh, in addition, aren't you the one who said you didn't want to play god? That is my tirage coming straight from the vile war vent of a fucking demon prince. Do you know, there is a difference between actually having the powers and distinguished looks of a god, and wanting to be worshipped as one. Um, good morning you two. Uh, I know you're busy studying each other with wordships right now, but- About guard smacking time you got here. Where is the tea, Sonny? Well, I was disintegrated by a warp bolt when I walked into your room. Damn you, Magnus. Your unregulated psyker powers have caused yet another disaster. Me? You're the decaying force of nature who literally defecates warp storms whenever he tantrums. Uh, honestly, it, it doesn't matter. I'll just, you know, go and make some more tea later. <laughs> to avert the creation of another Eye of Terror on Terror, I think I need to ask something. Well, that is what I pay you for, isn't it? What does pay mean? But, um, yes. What are you two arguing about? My senile old bone sack of a father is almost as deluded as his foolish warshippers. He truly believes that chaos is nothing more than an utterly negative force which needs to be destroyed. In all my 48,000 years, I have not had much inclination to the contrary. Almost every single thing wrong with mankind is the fault of chaos. It's gods and their worshippers. If only humanity had listened to me and ignored chaos and all the arm-wavy religious crap, we would be well on the way to perfecting humanity as a species, and I would be way less spooky looking. Wait, so you're not arguing about what happened yesterday? The whole sending the entire Inquisition to the warp and convoluted plans thing? No, we finished arguing about that hours ago. Were you not paying attention? You sent me to get tea. And you took your sweet-ass time doing that, did you not? What were you doing? Trying to be all cheery cherry cream puff, or something. Maybe? You scare me when you pretend to have emotions. So what did you decide on? None of your concern. Corn cob, it will all be resolved at a later date. Oh. Okay. Back to the bitchy Branigan at hand. Where were we? You mentioned how you tried telling humanity to throw religions at a window, and ironically to never question you about it. Was it my turn to grumble or yours? I guess it's your turn to grumble. Go ahead. <laughs> What is so funny, Chuckle Shits? I thought we were grumbling here. Your great intellect really must be splintered. I have no reason to lie to you, so before you spew that whole noise of the heretic drivel at me... I am not some crazed old zealot from the first Dark Ages, son. 
Do you know how I feel about overuse of such terminology? Haven't you noticed what a spectacular comeback that word has made as of late? Sullied your hands with filthy parchments of heresy, guardsmen. How do you plead? What? No. Too late, heretic. You inspire your men to study such foul smut, Commissar? You heretic! Detestable mutants fill your heads with such vile obscenity. Die, heretic! Maybe just one. I need your blood to be- Oh, hold on. You're a heretic! You know what? They're just running around shooting each other down there. Better just lay the exterminatus upon these heretics. Alright, fire! Fucking heretics! Oh, do not get me started. Anyway, that's not the point. You see, chaos, the warp, all of that isn't just some demonic realm of nasty, horrible things. It's much more important than that. I know this already. Its true nature is that it is the realm of the collective spiritual subconscious of every single soul possessing species in the galaxy. In other words, the realm of souls. Right. And it is shitty, and requires some serious unfucking. And this is where the senile ramblings come back in. <sighs> Let me say something I learned while reading all those forbidden tomes with you. Do you remember back when you told humanity that there would be no gods? You said no religion, no worshipping of anything, and thus you figured the Chaos Gods would become completely irrelevant and thus starve to death, right? Yes, which is exactly what I wanted, and almost what happened. You were inadvertently creating a whole new Chaos God. Come again? Because it was not worshipped in the conventional way, its name never became revealed to mankind, but you were creating a Chaos God of unbelief, and you were becoming its champion, perhaps even its avatar. That has got to be the single dumbest thing I have ever heard in my entire life, and that is coming from a half deaf skeleton that has been stuck on a life-sustaining God couch for the past 10,000 years. Well, believe it or not, that's what was happening. You see, Chaos isn't some Saturday morning cartoon villain that you can just defeat. It's a force of reality itself, and the more you try to control and restrain it, the more it will act against you. It's a reflection of those who empower it, who in turn it empowers. Just as gravity dictates how objects are pulled towards each other and energy condenses into matter and form, so too does Chaos function as yet another celestial process. You should know and accept that by now. That is all well and true, but that does not make it not dangerous. Stupid, dangerously stupid, and stupidly dangerous. You should also know and accept by now that things which are factually correct can still be unfathomably idiotic. Well, I suppose you're right in that sense. Ever since Slanesh was murder-fucked into existence, things have kinda got out of hand. Hands off my quips, Chili Pepper. Get your own. Uh, can I possibly ask something? You are paid by the hour, not by the question. Right, but if what Magnus is saying is true, which it is, and the warp is a reflection of the subconsciousness of all mankind, does that mean we're all horrible, terrible, awful people? On the inside, yes, absolutely disgusting. I am outside of that cycle, you see, so it does not apply to me, because, do you know, I am pretty much perfect, and all that, or I used to be anyway, when I still had good old boners done. But yes, this is why I have been trying to guide mankind all this time. Humanity gets to collectively create its own realm with their subconscious thoughts, and you fill it with paranoia, fear, blood, Brussels sprouts, and self-contradictory bullshit. It is like you are all mindless men children, scribbling dicks in your notebooks when you should be paying attention to the lessons that I am trying to fucking teach you. Those students and you have perfectly synergetic personalities for the record. Oh. Now I feel terrible about myself. Worse than ever before. Good. That is a step in the right direction. But I don't understand. If the warp is the realm of souls, then how do psychers work? Aren't they using witchcraft and demonic rituals to attain unholy power? To the ignorant and untrained eye, it would certainly seem so. However, it's actually much simpler than that. Some people have a natural ability to channel the warp's power more than others, just like how some people have other genetically determined talents or abilities. Since a warp is based on the power of emotions, one can use this ability to channel their own willpower and bend the world around us. Just as we change the shape of the warp with our own minds, so too does the warp allow those talented enough to change reality. 
What did I say about fireballs in the throne room? Yes, yes, I need to ask you first. Sorry, Dad. That is better. As I was saying, the stronger your connection to the warp, the stranger you become in the eyes of others. This may make you feel incredibly lonely and ostracized, but don't worry, as a psycho, you're never alone. You've now got a whole lot of extra-dimensional attention from demons and the like to keep you company in those cold, dark nights. Suffice to say, this, combined with the fact that possessions are a thing, is the primary reason why psychos are usually seen as horrid witches that need killings. Ah, well, that does explain something. It means I'm definitely not a psycho after all! Wait, what about the great enemies of man? How does all of this explain the dark gods, demons, and all of that? Have you ever heard the saying, we all have our own personal demons? Yes. Think about that phrase, and take into account what Magnus just said about the warp. Now apply the resulting realization to the entire population of a galaxy. Oh. Oh. Oh! It's worse than simply being a hellish realm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, little gold sparkle, it is much, much more than that. Every single thought or feeling you've ever had, both consciously and subconsciously, becomes reality in the warp. Every single human emotion becomes a power. Every single metaphor becomes a literal meaning. Everyone's wishes, dreams, desires, fears, and nightmares are incarnated. Of course, the reason the warp is so corrosive and horrifying is because so many conflicting and contradicting ideas are floating around inside of it. And the gods are, in fact, collective subconscious constructs that reflect crucial mental aspects of all life. Daemons are shards of their respective gods, much like individual cells make up an organism. If that's true, then why are they so, you know, completely horrible and evil? I mean, we can't all be 100% evil all the time, can we? Of course not. Something which people seem to forget, including the gods themselves, is that they represent all thoughts and emotions. The good, the bad, and the ugly. For example, Zinch may be a cruel and devious trickster, but he's also a force of progress and a beacon of hope. Change, after all, is neither innately benevolent or malevolent, but it sure as shitling isn't the same as it was before. This sounds like propaganda. Well, you know it is true. Without Zinch, there would be no malicious schemes, but there would also be no one clever enough to save people from those schemes. Nothing would ever get done, and we would fall into an eternal stasis of static karma. And that is what Nurgle represents. Stagnancy. A lack of change. Inevitable eternal cycles of decay and renewal. But he also represents the resilience, resolve, and solidarity to face those same unsettling inevitabilities. In short, if everything is shit, why worry about it? That is why his followers are so disturbingly, insufferably cheerful even when most of their entrails are on the wrong side of their ribcage. Without Nurgle, there would be no consistency, safety or comfort in living and dying. In fact, there would be no consistency at all, although cycles of decaying renewal are just the circle of life. In fact, Nurgle is technically nature incarnate. Is... is this really true? To be honest, even taking into consideration that this is about as batshit fucking crazy as Conrad Curse, all of this about the gods is actually correct. He is still being an ass barrel though. Absolutely, they both are. I'm not gonna argue that. I was referring to you. Sure. What about the others? If Zinch is progress and Nurgle is nature, then what the hell are the other two meant to be? What possible purpose could they have besides creating massively unnecessary amounts of death and suffering? Well, corn may be a force of merciless, mindless slaughter and hatred, but that's because it prescribes to another natural concept, survival of the fittest. Strength and skill are all that matters to him. He also represents justice, vengeance, and honor, so unlike the others, Korn would never try to trick you or stab you in the back. He will just stab you in the face, over and over again, until your face stops resembling a face. Without him, there would be no honesty, no strength to fight against injustice. And speaking of injustice, Slash may be a horrifying, cruel, torturous fiend that breaks minds and inflicts untold suffering, but he... She... It also exudes just as much joy, freedom, and expression, and happiness. Because hello, hello, someone has gotta be enjoying your pain and agony, after all. It's ironic, yet it makes sense. Sanesh is formed from the extremes of emotional experience, representing both joyful freedom as well as crippling suffering. Without Sanesh, there would be no happiness and no grief to make those happy times mean anything. And that's why you can't just kill them. The universe needs chaos to survive. Destroying chaos would basically destroy the entirety of the human psyche. And that is where you fall into the pit of objective incorrectness, you pile of bratwursts. 
I can defeat chaos, and I must, for the good of us all, I accept, that what you say is true, Magnus, but I must bring peace to humanity, and the entire galaxy. And so long as chaos exists in its current state, this goal will never be achieved. I must defeat those four giant floating reality tumors. Oh really? Well do enlighten me and explain how you're going to d <sighs> You're going to say, I can't tell you now but you'll see and understand all in good time, aren't you? You did not need telepathy for that, now did you? No, I'm just used to hearing that kind of thing by now. I know it is not what you want to hear, after all we have been through, but my son, I cannot tell you now. I will tell you when the time is right. Understood? Didn't you say that no curtains were to cover up your plans for the future this time around? No seriously, if I told you this it would totally ruin the surprise, not to mention the risks involved. Ugh. <sighs> Well, all right, but just for this one occasion. Thanks, son. Just trust me this time, and do not let a flying space octopus convince you to turn on us all again, okay? Okay. So, if you knew all this, why did you fall in chaos at all? And being all demonic and stuff? How does that work for you anyway? To answer the less personal question first, daemon princes are always former members of a soul-bearing species who have had their soul removed by a chaos god and replaced with a humongous mass of warp energy. This turns their bodies intangible and charges them with infernal power, basically turning them into a daemon. These kind of surgeries should be universally illegalized. Anyone or anything that undergoes this process must have great amounts of willpower to retain any of their personality. If they don't, they become mindless chaos spawns. If they succeed and survive the process, well, it's hard to explain. Since warp energy is basically just raw, undiluted, and unrefined soul stuff, it serves roughly the same purpose as a soul, with the benefit of being way more powerful, at the expense of being way less stable. It actually takes quite a bit of effort for me to retain this humanoid form right now. Oh yeah, I remember what your true form looks like now. I bet looking like that makes you feel really proud of yourself. Dad, we agreed not to talk about that. About what? Nothing! Not a thing! Nothing at all! And this was the less personal question? <sighs> Changing the subject, now that I have my soul bag, I feel... weird. I guess I'm some kind of... half daemon now? I would laugh at how silly and full of angst that idea sounds if it were not for it being true. Actually, fuck it, I will laugh anyway. <laughs> now as for your other question... I didn't know all of this information at first, meaning I couldn't make informed decisions back then. I mean, it's not exactly common knowledge. For some reason! I only learned after it was too late to turn back. As for why I didn't try to change my ways, to be honest, I'm not even sure myself anymore. I didn't think there was a way out, and I didn't know where I stood or whose side I was on anymore. From my experience, I'm not sure there were or even are sides to take. I felt, and still feel, betrayed by everyone I trusted, but I also felt like I was betraying myself. Whatever side you took seems to have edges so sharp you could cut through power armor with them. Very funny, you sparkly skeleton showcase. You need a... a hand making that one up? Good effort. Keep trying. Because I liked where you were going with that. It had movement and progression. One day you will get a good one, and we will laugh incessantly. Whatever, father. At least you should know where you stand by now. I hope after everything we have done, and everything I have said, that you realize that you can trust in me again, even if it is just a tiny little bit. Eh... maybe. To be honest, we can argue until you turn pale and my right hand fucks off to wherever the left hand went. But at the end of the day, you are still my son. Even if you look like you are straight out of a rebellious gang, that mugs old ladies. I am just glad that you are finally admitting you do not know shit. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll do the same. Do not bet on it. Who ho 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 Well, at least you're not violently arguing anymore. How about some tea? Count me in. Sure. Wait, how would you even drink it? Emperor, that is how. But didn't you say that using your powers for trivial things was agony? Using my powers at all is agony. But sometimes it's just too fucking funny not to. <laughs> Using cosmic powers to drink tea. That's certainly the father I remember. Oh you. Say, here is another 100% beneficial way to make good use of my powers. Uh, 
I've located the Astronomicon, but- What is it? Is its signature faint? No. It's... It's flipping me the bird. Navigator, how the feth can a giant holy space beacon flip you the bird? It's a sign from our Lord of Terror! Everyone must go fuck with If you have the sign decrease, I'll go retrieve the power dildo. You gotta go fuck yourself! These truly are dark times. That was absolutely splendid, Father. You bet. Put him here, son.